Okay, I don't know if this is actually going to make a difference, but I am wearing a um, Bluetooth headphone and I'm hoping that that helps with the sound quality of the video so that um, maybe it's like canceling out some of the noise in the background. I'm not sure if that's how this works or if I have to buy one of those like little clip-on microphones, um, but I thought I'd give it a try and um, I did a couple test shots and it seemed to work so that way I don't have to project my voice as much um, at this point in time. Um, but I'm just hanging out in the garden this afternoon. Um, it's really warm here today. It's like 80 in the low 80s, like 80, 81 degrees. Um, and it has the flowers really blooming in the yard so I wanted to sit by my daffodils here. Um, there's a sidewalk right here that goes through the middle of my yard and that's where I'm hanging out right now because I wanted to be next to these daffodils um, so I could get them on camera and, rem and remember what they look like. I am planning on harvesting these actually after the video so I wanted to um, get them on camera so I can enjoy how they look um, for time to come. I can look back on this video and remember how these daffodils were blooming here at the end of March. So it is the last week of March. It is the uh, second week of spring. And uh, you know, the season has really been showing in the flowers. They're all starting to wake up and bud up. Um, the daffodils are blooming, the anemones are blooming. And um, I'm just so thankful that spring is here. Um, we often in the gardening community and like on social media, people will always uh, joke, often joke. It's coming from a lighthearted place, but talking about how um, they may deal with seasonal affective disorder. But now that spring is here and it's 60 and 70 degrees, they're no longer depressed. <laughs> and so, um, I am a firm believer in not allowing my uh, surroundings and my situation to dictate my emotions. And even though I believe in that, there are times when um, I do allow my situations to dictate my emotions. So I can empathize with people who have a hard time when the sun is not shining and the days are much more dreary, um, just not feeling that sense of happiness. Personally, um, I derive a sense of joy no matter the season. So uh, I don't allow the uh, gray days of the winter to dishearten me. Um, so I do wanna offer any encouragement for anyone out there who does deal with seasonal affective disorder, even though people joke about it in a lighthearted way, I know um, it can be something that is a reality for a lot of people. And then when the sun starts shining, you feel uh, a lift in your mood. And I'm thankful for that. For me personally, I feel a lift in my mood when I see the flowers blooming. Um, if you know a little bit about my story, um, and I wanted to talk a little bit about that today, that it is a story, but more than that, it is my testimony. And one of the things that I have just really felt pressed on my heart is to share my story, a portion of my story, and how it encompasses my overall testimony. So that's what we're gonna get into today. I wanna talk to you guys a little bit about some of my background and also uh, for those who are new to my channel, and I don't think I've ever done this, just kind of give a little, I mean, I've done it a little bit, but like an official introduction on um, what I'm about and what this channel is about. And also why Squire Studio? Why is that the name of my channel? I don't think I've given any background onto as to why that's the name of my channel. So we're gonna get into that right after this. Stay tuned. So I wanted to just preface this, um, which I was talking about previously, the um, seasonal affective disorder and how a lot of people um, talk about it in a lighthearted way, uh, in a joking way, and I think I think that's fine. I don't necessarily have an issue with that, and I know people who are affected by seasonal affective disorder also um, will joke about it from time to time. But um, 
if you know anything about my story, which I will give you the background now, um, in regards to my emotional and mental health, being in the garden and being able to be productive in the garden and just having a hand in helping the garden grow has brought tremendous joy to my life. So in 2019, um, I gave birth to twins and actually what's funny, um, coincidence, but not coincidence, I think it's, um, divinely ordained was my uh, my twins birthdays are on August 22nd and so actually um, my church today um, our pastor was preaching and we were reading a verse from uh, Genesis 8 22 and so I'll put that verse here <laughs> because I don't have that verse memorized but here is Genesis 8 22 and um, when our pastor was going over this verse, he also talked about um, the significance of the numbers 8 and 22. And it was such a blessing on my heart to hear him say that the significance of 8 and 22 has to do with um, new beginnings, a rebirth, and um, creation. And during that time in 2019, I had been diagnosed with... Um, uh, it's called peripartum cardiomyopathy, and I've spoken on that before. Um, it's a form of heart failure, which they don't necessarily know what causes it, but it's a form of heart failure that takes place um, at the end of the pregnancy or um, just after birth, where um, the heart starts function, uh, functioning improperly, it's not um, working adequately enough, and then it can cause like uh, multi-system organ failure um, because the other organs in your body aren't receiving the blood that they need so that was at the end of 2019 when I was diagnosed um, with the heart failure it was actually the day after my twins were born that I received this diagnosis I was in the hospital and um, the reason why I was still in the hospital after the, the day after the birth was because I had to have a c-section um, I had gone into preterm labor, um, and then they thought I may be preeclamptic. My blood pressure was kind of high. I was retaining a lot of water, and then there were some levels of uh, protein in my urine. So they decided to go ahead and take me in for a C-section. Um, after the C-section, I think I passed out. I feel like I might have lost consciousness because I don't actually remember <laughs> um, what happened after um, the c-section but I remember being in my room and waking up and having a very hard time breathing and for about a month prior to the twins being born I had also had a difficult time breathing um, my daughter she was baby B so she was the second to be born she was also having a difficult time breathing so the hospital that um, my children were birthed at did not have a NICU. So they wanted to transfer her by ambulance to the nearest hospital that had a NICU. And I asked to be transferred, which they normally didn't do. It was outside of their protocol to transfer the mother, especially after having had a C-section to another hospital. But by God's grace, I was able to be transferred with her, um, as was baby A, my son. So all three of us, were sent by ambulance to um, the neighboring city um, so that my daughter could receive care. But little did I know that I also needed care as well. So um, while at the second hospital, the next morning after the twins' birth, I was being examined by one of the family doctors. And um, that's when she noticed that every time I laid back, um, I would just start coughing and coughing and coughing. And then she asked me, how long has this been going on? And I let her know for about a month and um, I had just been brushing it off because I thought it was from the size of my belly the babies may be pressing against my lungs um, but that was not the case and they ran several tests and that's when they determined that it was the um, peripartum cardiomyopathy so in that being said today having found out that the numbers 8 and 22 together had that significance of um, new beginnings in creation. I just felt that them being born a month before their due date um, 
And then all the issues that I had been having with my heart was really a divine appointment in order for me to be walking in this new season of my life. And after they were born, I was struggling with some mental and emotional issues because I was in a place in my life where I was in a place in my life where doctors were telling me that my life was going to look significantly different in regards to my ability to do different physical activities. I was, I mean, I didn't think that I had like um, horrible eating habits before or anything, but just that when you're in it, when you're diagnosed with heart failure, there's a lot of diet changes that you have to make in regards to like your salt intake um, because you can start retaining water. Um, and then like for me personally, the water was then gathering around my heart. So I actually did feel almost like I was drowning for about the month, last month of my pregnancy. Every time I would lay flat and feel that pressure in my chest and I would begin to cough, it, it felt like I was drowning. Like there was water in my lungs and I couldn't get it out. And it wasn't until I sat up that I was able to breathe correctly. So there was like for weeks, I had to sleep like propped up like this. Otherwise I couldn't breathe. And so then to receive that news, like right after having um, two newborns, it was, it was hard to just be told you know, as a mother, you want to be able to interact with your kids and participate in the things that they want to participate in. And to go to the heart clinic and be told like a book, like they gave me a booklet full of things on how I was going to have to modify different activities in my life so that I wouldn't put too much strain on my body. So that took me to a really difficult place mentally and emotionally. And then at um, postpartum checkups, there's that mental health evaluation that they do. If you've had a hospital birth, you know they do. And some doctors pay attention to it and some don't, but they do give like a mental health evaluation to new mothers because of issues such as postpartum depression, postpartum anxiety, postpartum psychosis with all the different hormonal fluctuations. So I'm thankful that that is an area that at least medical professionals are looking at and not writing it off as just a hysterical mother. Or, um, but it's something that medical professionals are taking more seriously in this day and age and I'm thankful for that. And so um, during some of my evaluations postpartum, more diagnosis about um, I could be potentially experiencing PTSD from the events leading up to my um, heart fail failure diagnosis and diagnosis about anxiety and stuff and so it was um, it was a whole ordeal. <laughs> So all that to say, after I had my twins, I was um, in a season where I was experiencing difficulty in regards to my mental and emotional and my physical health. And my physical health was creating um, a sense of turmoil for me in my um, emotional and mental health. And so after, uh, several months of being on different medications um, to help my heart begin to heal I felt I felt like I had the ability within myself to find something to help me um, in regards to like not just confining myself to these specific parameters of what the medical field was saying I was going to have to do because of this season of my life that I was experiencing. And in previous videos on other social media, I've talked about how I started searching out ways on things I could do 
as being a person who was currently experiencing heart failure, what could I actually do? Because they were telling you, you can't eat this, you can't do this, you can't do this. And I'm like, what can I do? Because that's what I needed. And I needed that for my emotional and my mental health and my physical health. I needed to know what I could do so that I could do that and find encouragement in that and hold on to something that I could do. So I joined a support group online. I um, did reading and that's when I came across gardening. <laughs> And I thought to myself, I've always wanted to try that and to know that that's something that I could do that wasn't gonna be too physically strenuous on my body um, to the point where my heart rate was gonna get higher than it needed to be, I'll give it a try. And so I started out with container gardening. And while I failed a lot, there was still a huge sense of satisfaction when I was able to see um, the things that I was growing and to know that I was taking part and creating something that was really exciting to me because I just felt like I don't know I needed to just feel like I was still useful <laughs> or something and so that's when the whole garden began and so that's just like a clip of why I got into what I got into but as I was creating this garden I wanted it to be something more I wanted it to be more than a garden and there's nothing wrong with having a garden for the sake of having a garden because having a garden for the sake of having a garden creates beauty and it creates life and it ca it calls life into the space that you're creating and so I wanted to be a part of all of that and I also wanted to be a part in creating a legacy for my family for my children as well as a sense of hope for my community around me because at that time I was feeling a sense of hopelessness not complete hopelessness but just hopelessness and what I was going to be able to actually do physically and so with creating the garden and seeing things grow and seeing things bloom harvesting my first bouquets there was a sense of hope that was rekindled within me and so with that, I was like, I want this to be more. I know this can be more. I looked out and saw what it could be and how it could be a legacy for my children, a place that they could come to if they were feeling a sense of hopelessness to know that their mother was also at a place of feeling a sense of hopelessness, but was able to come out here to remember that there is hope. I still have a purpose and I can be useful and so in doing that and creating this garden I wanted to give it a name and that's where the name Squire Studio came came from um, on most social media my name on social media is Courtney McCary McCary is my maiden name um, I am married, have been married for almost 11 years to a wonderful man. His name is James Squires. So my married name is Squires. And so all of my children, their last name is Squires. And so this is our home. This is our garden. And I wanted our name to be tied to this home. And I wanted our name to be tied to this garden. And at the same time, I thought, what's a space where you have free reign to be able to be creative to be able to be expressive to express yourself to be able to express your creativity to be able to really use your imagination and that's when the word studio came to me because an artist has a studio an artist creates in a studio whether that art form be painting or dancing or singing recording artists record their songs in studios and so when thinking about wanting to create a space wanting to create a lifestyle for my family that points to the importance of creativity that points to the importance of creation the importance of utilizing your ability to create and I really like alliteration. <laughs> so, so the name Squire Studio is a combination of that. Something that has our family name tied to it. 
and also has tied to it the importance of utilizing your gift of creativity to create hope, to create beauty, and to create freedom. And that's ultimately what I wanted to do for my family is to create freedom for them to be able to be who God has called them to be. And so that is behind the name. That is the story behind the name of the channel. <clears throat> I'm such a crier <laughs> for um, a long portion of my life. I, so, I was told by outside sources that I need a tougher skin or I can't be so sensitive. But I, at 34 years old, I have finally learned that sensitivity is okay and it is acceptable because it's part of who I am uniquely. And so I'm not going to apologize for the tears. The tears come because I'm expressing myself and the tears come from a place of sincerity. And my flesh wants to be embarrassed by the tears because there's lots of people who don't find tears to be acceptable, but they're okay. I just wanted to share with you this the story behind our name, Squire Studios, so that you can understand how near and dear to me this vision for our home and for our family is. <sighs> because when I share this vision with you, it does come from a place of vulnerability. But I hope that the vulnerability and the sharing can inspire some, someone else out there to embrace your own creativity and your own ability to create life, to walk in newness of life, and to boldly walk in what God has called you to do in your life to create freedom for others. So with that, I am going to close this video and thank you so much for continuing to follow me on my journey with my garden, with my family here at Squire Studio. And until next time, keep learning and keep growing. <laughs>